In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to begin by um, expressing my sincere condolences uh, to the family of my um, my dear uncle, my tío, Raimundo Provincio, um, to my Aunt Toti, to her children, Mundis, Roger, uh, Roseanne, and Renee. Um, I can't express to you how much um, I am praying for you and desire uh, for you to receive from uh, the death of your father all the graces that God intends for you because there are many there and maybe sometimes we, we forget. But um, I want to recognize a couple of things. One is that my Uncle Ray, uh, when I first learned of his death, which, I, which was rather quick, I'm sure, but it happened to be the hour of mercy, the ending of the hour of mercy here in Detroit. And so I was very thankful for that, that I was able to recognize um, uh, my uncle during that hour of mercy. And besides praying for him a lot over the last... A few months. Anybody who suffers that way, we end up praying for quite a bit, and I did for him uh, and for the family. And so, um, when I noticed that, the second thing I noticed was that it was his. He he died on the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, and um, that brought me great comfort as well. That uh, uh, Our Lady of the Rosary. Uh, if you don't know, many of you may not know, is the way um, Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, um, uh, revealed herself at Fatima when they when she finally on the on um, the last um, uh, time that she uh, appeared to the children, and she said, "I am the Lady of the Rosary," and they knew she was from heaven, but they wasn't they weren't exactly sure. Um, who she was, and so she revealed that. And so he died on the feast of Our Lady the Rosary, the feast of Our Lady, uh, a feast of Our Lady of Fatima. And then, which could only be by God's design, that during this during this crisis, during this COVID crisis, all so many things have to change, and um, the the Rosary, which is recited for the faithful, uh, for the for the person who has departed. Uh, the day, usually the day before his funeral, um, happens to be on Tuesday, which is October 13th, which is the 103rd uh, anniversary of the Miracle of the Sun that happened on the same day that she revealed herself as the Lady of the Rosary, was the, also the day of the Miracle of the Sun, October 13th. And um, not, there's no coincidence with God. There's none. And so my Uncle Ray uh, left this earth, left his earthly life on the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And the Rosary is going to be recited for him on Tuesday, October 13th, the 103rd anniversary of the Miracle of the Sun uh, and the last apparition of Our Lady of Fatima. So no coincidence, to, in my mind, there's no coincidence to why that happened. And I, and I think I know why. And that's part of what I want to talk about. The fancy word is oration, you know. That's what I'm calling this because it's, it's really, uh, I want to talk to you. And in this case, I'm talking to you about death. <clears throat> um, in, in the traditional way, in the church, we talk about death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Now, I'll, many of you may never hear of that anymore because um, there's this uh, phenomenon that is in the world that's been happening for the last, uh, say, 100 years, that we all discover our own truths. We all, you know, I can open the Holy Scripture and I can read it for myself and figure out what it means. I, For me, I, can, I have my truth about God, about... Uh, you know, my God would not be this way. My God would not be that way. Another word for it is relativism. That everything is relative to me. So what, what ends up happening is that rather than our lives being centered on our Lord, with the example, with Our Lady as the example of how we should center our lives on our Lord, we center our lives on ourselves, on what we think, 
how we think, what we think should be. And it's, 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 it, may, it will make life very, very difficult for you if you continue to do that. And so I know that many of you watching this, listening to this, wherever you are seeing this, maybe this might come as a very, some very hard truths, but that's what I want to talk to you about is the truth. Uh, the truth is about um, a very long life uh, for my Uncle Ray, 61 years of marriage to my Aunt Toti, uh, something that we won't hear of anymore. Um, who's, there may be people who are together that long, but they certainly didn't get married and get uh, in the church and have it as a sacramental marriage. And uh, it's something that they enjoy for the 61 years that he was married to um, uh, my dear Aunt Toti as well. But we're going to talk about the truth. And remember, I mentioned the four things, the four, the four, what we call traditionally the four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Those are great truths and great mystery. And so if I can start there with mystery, the importance of understanding mystery, especially as, as Roman Catholics, and it's a very important part of who we are, how we understand God, because it's impossible to know many things. Um, you might hear from TV preachers that they have an answer for everything. Well, many times the church will say it's a mystery. Why? Because we just don't understand. We don't, we will never know until we are there ourselves with God. And we can understand many things that he desires for us to understand. In this case, mystery, when uh, my uncle was born to his parents, there was great mystery, for, and like us all, we're all the same. Great mystery, what would this child be? Who would he become? Uh, what would he desire to do in life? How would he live his life? Who would he marry? How would his children be? What would happen during that time? All the ups and downs in life are at that point of birth a mystery. Well, at the point of death, mystery's gone. There's no more mystery to the life of my Uncle Ray. We now can look back and we know precisely what happened. We know all the ins and outs, at least his wife does and his family does. That's what we celebrate. Even the, the um, everything that happened, um, even arguments, disagreements, tragedies, become like wonderful, perfect jewels that... Um, we want to cling to, we want to hold on to, because everything is so precious. Everything about him is so precious to us now, and that's how it should be. And so, in understanding that there is great mystery to life, and part of that mystery is doing our best to understand these four last things. Uh, death, judgment, heaven, and hell. And so now that my Uncle Ray has passed, he's experienced death. And so, what happens? is that because our Lord told us, our Lord revealed this to us, that we will have a particular judgment. And that's when all truth will be revealed to us, not the truth of the world, but the truth of us, the truth in our hearts, the truth of our lives, good and bad. All of that will be revealed to us. That is the particular judgment. I realize I'm moving a little quickly. Remember, we're talking about the four things, death, judgment, heaven, hell. Okay. Death, well, death is death. We can cover that. Okay, judgment. Okay, now we're into the supernatural. We're into uh, uh, what happens later. And so the moment that we die, we have our particular judgment. And I promise you, as long as you're breathing, as long as our Lord is sustaining you in life on this earth, you have opportunity to change. And you must change to the truth. What is the truth? That there is one God. And he sent his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in order to bring about the redemption of the world through his passion and through his, resur through his passion and through his resurrection. And it is those merits which we now enjoy that help us um, to get to heaven. It's during our life 
that we are supposed to become to a greater understanding of these things. Because once we die, that's it. There's not going to be anybody there arguing for you or for your case. It's just going to be you and our Lord. And like he shared with St. Faustina in the uh, message of the Divine Mercy, in that all truth, all your truth will be made known to you. And it becomes, of course, our Lord knows, but it becomes all true to you. So you're going to receive it as though you were, in the sense, living. If your mind was, was, you know, you were on earth and you received that truth. Okay. If you are already rejecting the truths of the church, the truths that have been taught for millennia after millennia, you're not all of a sudden going to change when you're in front of our Lord. Because it just doesn't happen. You, do, you're, you die as you, as you were. As, as it, uh, in theology will say, your, your, your will is fixed at the point of death. You can no longer will something different than what is. And so if you die rejecting, if you die angry, if you die uh, without understanding, it's not good. Okay, now, the wonderful thing is that he's a merciful Lord, greatly merciful. And in that same lesson he was teaching St. Faustina, he said, all you have to do, and I'm paraphrasing, but at that moment that you see him and all truth becomes known to you, good and bad, exactly how our God sees you, all we have to do is surrender. The same surrender that should be happening while we're on earth. A daily surrender, daily conversion, as you used to hear, you know, daily conversion. Everybody needs it, every single one of us. And so that surrender is so important. So... Someone may have really had a troubled life, maybe had um, done things they're not proud of, or maybe had experienced things they thought that was go they thought were was going to keep them from union with God at the end of their at, when their earthly life expired and they enter into into eternal life. Well, as long as their heart is open, they'll know, and so. Remember, we talked about the, the person who dies rejecting God. Well, when that person sees our Lord and the truth is revealed, they're not all of a sudden going to say, Oh, yeah, okay, well, now that you've explained it to me, well, okay. But, you know, it's basically, they'd be saying that, uh, uh, you know, they, they didn't have that opportunity on earth when everybody knows they did. Okay, but there are people, and maybe you've met some, that completely reject the truths of the church, the truths of the gospel, the truths of life. And by rejecting that, when it's revealed to them that they have rejected it, they're not, they're going to turn their back to our Lord. Because they, their will is fixed. They're going to say no, as they were saying no on the earth, so they'll say no at their judgment. And what happens to those people? Remember, we were talking about you know, four last things, death, judgment, which we're talking about now, heaven and hell. Our Lord does not condemn anybody to hell. We end up condemning ourselves because we didn't take any time to try to understand who he truly is. And we get it from the Holy Gospel, from the magisterium that is the church, and from practicing the sacraments, Holy Mass, Holy Confession. Mass every week. Confession as much as you can. At least once a month. And certainly every time that you have sinned in a way that you need to go to confession. Thanks be to God for confession. So, sometimes a soul dies as there before the particular judgment. And they reject God just like they rejected him on earth. And, and, and their fate is sealed. There's another soul that might die, or that does die, and the same thing happens, but when it's revealed to them, they look at our Lord and they say, Lord, let me go clean up. Let me go wash up before I see you. 
the good venerable archbishop would talk would 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 talk about it like um, being caught in the middle of spring cleaning, a deep cleaning that everyone does with their homes at some point, and you're right in the middle of it, and you're called by someone who you do not want to disappoint, that you know you want to see, and they're knocking at the door. And what do you want to do? Wait, 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 let me get ready. Let me put on something better. Let me clean up before I see you. That's the reaction of a person of faith when they die. Um, it may not be perfect, certainly, but they recognize that that's our Lord, and this is the truth, and I surrender to you, O Lord. And I want to go and clean myself up first before I know I can be with you. And where does that person go? And we know that person goes to purgatory. And purgatory is the blessed, merciful place of purgatory. Now, those souls who suffer in purgatory can only pray for others. They can no longer pray for themselves. In other words, they can no longer gain merit for themselves. They can only pray for others. We can pray for them. So a couple of, of references, I think, you know, with Our Lady of Fatima, that's what she said. Pray for so all those souls who have no one to pray for them. And it's not that, that prayer is magic. Prayer certainly can be a miracle. It's not magic. So maybe I can relate a couple of things to you. Um, so many little stories that are coming up, but uh, there's a story about the Saint John Vianney from France, a priest. He lived in the 1800s, I think, something like that. Very popular saint, wonderful, beautiful saint. And uh, he was at his parish, and Saint John was known for hearing confessions for 12, 14, 16 hours at a time. And um, one day he was there in his parish and a, and a woman uh, walked up to him and she was very worried and her husband was now dead. But she went and uh, wanted to ask father because her husband had jumped off the bridge and killed himself. And so she was so worried, so, so worried about his soul. And so father said, you know, uh, okay, you know, go, let's pray and come back later and I'll have an answer for you. And uh, father went in deep prayer and, you know, when the lady came back, she, he said, well, um, I just want you to know that your husband is safe. And she was so surprised and she said, how could that be? What, what is it that saved him in a sense? And so St. John Vianney revealed to her a story that was revealed to him. And he said that one day, because he, this, this man never went to church, he never practiced, he was baptized and he received the sacraments, but that was it. And he ended up committing suicide by jumping off that bridge. But during his lifetime, one time, he went and bought flowers and then took them to the altar of Our Lady in that same church. And um, St. John doesn't reveal why, uh, if, he, if he, we even knew why he did that, but he did that for Our Lady. And that was why, that was why he was saved. Because of that devotion he showed to Our Lady on that one time. It doesn't mean we only need one time. It's, I'm trying to show you an example of how merciful God is. If you were willing, if you desire, he'll never turn you down, ever. Ever, ever, ever. All you have to do is be willing. And that's what I try to share with people. Just, you know, it's no one is Superman or Superwoman. Everyone has problems. Life brings a lot of things. Are we willing? Do we have a desire to be with our Lord? To understand Him? To understand what His church teaches? The church that He founded? What it teaches now? 
and we have to say yes yes and more yes because it's you Lord and I want to be with you and so that person who sees um, how much they need to clean up is in purgatory and we can pray for them they can pray for us um, but they can't pray for themselves uh, another way to understand that is an old uh, story I'm not sure where it comes from and uh, it goes something like there was a, um, a person who understood who visited um, hell and in that place they saw people were starving they were famished they were skeletons but there was food there and they all had spoons and so but they were really really long spoons and so um, when it was this person went up and asked one of the souls why is it that you're famished and the soul said their spoons are too long for us to take some food and put it in our mouths we can't do it now you know bear with me I get that you know in our reasonable logical minds we're saying you know well couldn't you do this can you okay this is just a story to uh, to uh, eliminate a point so they had these long spoons and they're there depressed starving famished with nothing because the spoons that they have don't work for themselves well then she goes to um, purgatory same looks exactly the same exact same spoons and everything like that but these people are feeding they're getting better and so she asks them she says you know she tells them the story about what she saw in hell and now she sees them and she says, how is it that you're and the people here are, are eating and are getting better and are getting full and the person simply looked at her and said it's because we feed each other you see those spoons were too long for for a person to take them and and try to use it in a regular way for themselves but the people in purgatory knew uh, because of charity that they could feed each other and the people in hell oh, were always centered on themselves everything was about them and they thought that was okay and the people that will go to purgatory are those who understand that um, we have to help each other out. No one gets to heaven alone. You're either praying for somebody or someone's praying for you. I promise. That's just, just the way it is. Now, when you get to your judgment, there's not going to be anybody there with you arguing your case. It is just you and our Lord. But in, in during our life, our earthly career, no one gets to heaven alone. You're either praying for somebody or someone's praying for you. That's the four last things. Death, judgment, heaven, and hell. It's real. They're real. And um, our Lord wants you with him. You can see my pic the picture. I'm going to grab it. The picture of our Lord. Draw it. This is... Um, I can put it back where I have it. Okay. All those things are real. And so I am 100% completely convinced that my Uncle Ray has entered into eternal life. And there he understands. He knows God. God has revealed himself completely to him. And He's still trying to understand. And um, that's all right. But we can help him with our prayers. You know, and something that uh, many of you also ah. know, St. Padre Pio. Ah. And uh, St. Padre Pio would teach that uh, all of our prayers, all of our, the candles that will be lit, all of the um, things that will be done for um uh, the soul of a person who's gone our Lord takes into account when at that particular judgment and so it could be that many times someone does go straight to heaven based on what is still going to happen only our Lord can do that so what I'm saying is that what that means is that the candles that you need to light the prayers that need to be said 
even the funeral that needs to happen, the masses that should be said for him, do it. If you feel that you're compelled to do that, do it. Because it's owed. Indeed, our loved one could be in heaven. But it's based on those things that we're supposed to be doing. And like the communion that we enjoy with all of the faithful, even those things are helping us because by practicing our faith, lighting candles, having masses said, going to the cemetery to, to pray uh, for, the, for the departed, all those things are so important and it helps to build our faith. And I promise you, if you practice these things, you too will enjoy eternal life. It's, it's not hard, but it does require sacrifice. A sacrifice that means surrender to our Lord. So we can look back. I don't know. Uh, my uncle, was he? did he surrender? Was he surrendered to our Lord? I don't know. What I do know is that he was a man of faith. He believed in God. And we now owe it to him to continue to pray for him, to continue to love him, and most importantly, to mourn him with great love and compassion. Now is the time for mourning. To mourn him with great love and compassion. And as the days continue, and we might even long to see him, long to be with him, that too can build up the kingdom of God within our own hearts. Because now we long to be there. We long to um, go with our families, with our loved ones who have passed, and where, as the book of Revelation teaches us, where there'll be no more tears, no more suffering, we'll all be together. But it requires sacrifice and surrender while we're breathing, while we're on earth to our Lord by the example of Our Lady and each of us can do it because God wants everyone, all of us, but we must look at Him and like I've said so many times, those five easy words, Jesus I trust in you, just remember that. And I do remember telling uh, or sharing that with, with my uncle. And I, I am so sure, certain, that he now enjoys eternal life, understanding heaven and the saints and our Lord and our Lady, and what a wonderful thing that is. So to all my family there, to all who, who, who have taken a few moments to hear my uh, oration to my dear uncle, I send you my love, I send you my prayers. As always, I never forget you in my prayers each and every day. What I ask of you, um, say one prayer for my Uncle Ray, and say a prayer for an old beat-up monk here in Detroit who needs your prayers very much. God bless you. God love you all. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.